You can surely play well, right? Mill, my eldest son's wife, said this with a malicious smile. She wants to embarrass me in front of the whole family. My eldest son's wife, whose only boast is that she graduated from an elite music college, is desperate to take away the grand piano in my house. I've had enough of it. My name is Marine, and I turned 60 this year. My husband has already passed away, and my three sons have their own families. I live alone in a house that's too big for one person. I'm a so-called lonely senior, but fortunately, my eldest son and his wife live nearby. My eldest son always reassures me that if I have any problems, I should consult them right away. Honestly, I should probably sell this house and move into a condo or apartment that's suitable for one person. However, there is a reason I can't move, it's the grand piano my late husband gave me. As long as this piano is here, I won't leave this house. But this grand piano is causing a lot of friction. My eldest son's wife's name is Lorini. She's the problem. She flaunts her elite music school background, and I've disliked her since we first met. However, since my son chose her, I didn't impose my opinions. I remember they had a rushed marriage because she was supposedly pregnant, but after the wedding, it turned out she wasn't pregnant at all. I was thoroughly disgusted, but my kind-hearted eldest son said everyone makes mistakes and comforted her. Men often don't see the hidden motives women have. I think Lorini was determined to marry my eldest son, Ethan. I might be biased as his mother, but Ethan is tall, well-paid, and good-looking. Moreover, he has a gentle and kind nature. I couldn't bring myself to like her, thinking she took advantage of Ethan's kindness. Lorini seems to dislike me as well. She pretends to respect me as her Amael, but deep down, I can see that she is making fun of me. I guess they come from the fact that my hobby is piano. I've never played the piano in front of her despite her challenging remarks like I'd love to hear you played, Mill. I always declined. I played the piano for my late husband, and I intend to keep it that way. I didn't want to explain this to her. How can I sit at the piano when I walked with such a sneering smile? I was fed up with her mocking smiles every time we met. Last week, Lorini gave me a hard time again. Although it's reassuring that we live close, it also causes issues with our neighbors. Lorini loves gossip and has a habit of spreading rumors. She told our neighbors that I was against their marriage and that the stress caused her to miscarry. She was never pregnant, so a miscarriage was impossible, making me the villain to portray herself as a tragic heroine was too much. Lorini, have you been spreading lies to the neighbors? Even if it was early in their marriage, this was something I couldn't overlook. I confronted her. Lorini looked a bit embarrassed, but then she brazened it out and smiled her usual sneering smile. Mill, that's terrible. I don't know where you heard such rumors, but to believe others over me? And why not? Part of the family yet, with her sharp tongue, she turned the tables and accused me. She even managed to produce tears. I was dumbfounded. How could she lie so boldly and shamelessly? This incident reached Ethan's ears, and I ended up being heavily reprimanded. It was an unsatisfactory conclusion for me, but since it was soon after their wedding, I let it slide. When it comes to mother-in-law and daughter-in-law issues, I always seem to be at a disadvantage. I thought it was better to endure it than to have more strange rumors spread about me. Then the other day, something similar happened again. In the morning, the neighbors chatting by the garbage station changed their expressions when they saw me. I could immediately tell something had happened. Their reaction was just like before. Good morning, I greeted them, and they scattered like spiders. I sensed that another strange rumor was circulating. As soon as I returned from the garbage station, I contacted the neighbor I was closest to. Sorry to bother you so early, I explained what happened at the garbage station and asked if there was another strange rumor about me. Reluctantly, she told me the details. 
This time, the rumor was baseless, claiming I had shortened my husband's life. It was said that I had a spending problem, and my husband had to keep working after retirement to support my habits, leading to his death from overwork. But she married into the family after my husband had already passed away, there was no way she could speak about him. My neighbor agreed, that makes sense. She promised to help clear up the misunderstanding with the other neighbors. I felt a bit relieved, thinking the rumor wouldn't spread further. But then my anger toward Lorini started to boil. After getting married, Lorini quit her job to become a housewife. Bored during the day, she would gather the young wives in the neighborhood and indulge in gossip. Running out of daily topics, she must have spread false rumors about me, using my beloved husband's memory for her entertainment was unbearable. After breakfast, I went to visit Ethan's house. I arrived around 9.30 a.m., my son Ethan had already left for work. When I called out from the entrance, Lorini appeared from the bedroom with messy hair. What, Lorini? Have you been sleeping until now? Surprised, I couldn't help but raise my voice. You need to notify me before coming over, it's a nuisance. What do you want this early in the morning? Still groggy and grumpy, Lorini grumbled. The living room I was led to was messy and unclean. Even though I live nearby, I seldom visited to avoid interfering with my son's life. But this was too much. I'm sorry. I didn't notify you, it was urgent. So I apologized for not calling and got to the point. You couldn't have done it over the phone? Why did you come all the way here? She was clearly displeased with my visit. She plopped down on the sofa in her pajamas. She looked at me as if she were looking down on me. I stood in front of Lorini, holding back my rising anger. I asked her about the rumors without raising my voice. She just laughed. Oh, that. Can you explain, please? Stop spreading false rumors. Why? Because they're true, she smirked again. What proof do you have for such claims? Her attitude made me snap, and my tongue became harsh, but she remained calm. That grand piano is the proof. Didn't you ask your husband for it? I've never seen you play it, Lorini claimed. I had begged my husband for a grand piano I never played. Of course, she knew its value, being an elite music school graduate. It was to be expected, given her elite music school background. Isn't it wasteful to ask for a piano you can't even play? It's beautiful, for your husband. She completely mocked me. I couldn't find words to respond. She laughed. You can't argue because it's true. I couldn't bear to tell this woman the precious story behind the piano. Our cherished memories felt too sacred to share with her. When things get inconvenient, you just stay silent. I stood up and said, I'm leaving now. She laughed triumphantly as I walked out. Her laughter pierced my back. I cried in frustration once I got home. Since the rumor incident, I've kept my distance from my son's family. Honestly, I never wanted to see Lorini's face again. I felt sorry for Ethan, but when I thought about my son being caught between his wife and his mother. I realized that the best solution was for me to stay away from Lorini. However, some occasions are unavoidable, holidays are one of those times. On top of that, this year I am turning 60. Ethan contacted me about celebrating it. My other sons and their families would be visiting too. They planned to gather the whole family to celebrate. I was excited to see my grandchildren and sons again. I decided to ignore Lorini for the day. I kept telling myself that the day before my birthday, the house was bustling with arriving family members. The sudden increase in people was overwhelming. The grandchildren were lively, running around the house. One of them, my second son's daughter, quietly watched my piano. Do you like the piano? I asked. 
She nodded. I remembered my daughter-in-law telling me that she was very shy and withdrawn. She was worried because her daughter had trouble making friends, even in kindergarten. Would you like to play? I asked, and her face lit up. When I opened the lid of the keyboard, she timidly reached out. I helped her onto the bench. Can I play? She asked softly. Of course, go ahead. My granddaughter pressed a key with her tiny finger, a beautiful note rang out. She seemed surprised by the sound's resonance. She kept pressing keys, closing her eyes to absorb the sound. Watching her, I thought she might be the right one to inherit this piano. Hearing the music, my daughter-in-law appeared, saying, I'm sorry, Mill. Startled by her mom's appearance, my granddaughter snapped out of her musical reverie. She seems to like the piano. Is she taking lessons? When I asked my second son's wife, she replied that she had not yet made her learn to play the piano. My daughter-in-law said they couldn't afford it. Indeed, my second son's family has many children. They are raising five children, money was tight. I see. You can rely on me more. Don't hesitate. She nodded gratefully, saying, thank you. I wish Lorini could learn from her. Who's playing? Lorini barged in, her voice loud. She glanced at my granddaughter at the piano and snapped, this isn't a toy. This piano is not for kids who can't even play or understand its value. She pushed my granddaughter away from the piano. My granddaughter, frightened, got off the bench and then hid behind her mom. This piano should only be played by someone like me, a music elite, not kids or elderly. Her final jab was directed at me. My daughter-in-law bowed slightly to Lorini and took my granddaughter outside. Lorini, arms crossed, watched them leave, and then tried to sit at the piano. I quickly closed the keyboard cover. I couldn't stand the thought of her touching it. It was an instinctive move, but Lorini glared at me. This piano holds precious memories of my husband. I don't want someone who pushes children away to play it. Sorry, I smiled at her. She clicked her tongue. She must have sensed my determination. Let me just say, Mill, you're wasting this piano. It belongs to someone like me. I'll take it. Her eyes weren't smiling as she said it. I realized Lorini was serious. The next evening, my family gathered to celebrate my 60th birthday, except for my eldest son and his wife. It had been a long time since everyone was together. My sons and their families celebrated joyously. Wearing a red vest was a bit embarrassing, but I was happy to be celebrated. The grandchildren sang for me, and the party was lively. When the singing ended and everyone applauded, Lorini suddenly spoke up. Why don't we have Mill play the piano? Pretending it was a sudden idea, I knew she wanted to embarrass me. My sons egged her suggestion, saying they'd never heard me playing. I only played when I was alone with my husband. My sons had never heard me. With such a wonderful piano, Mill must be a great player, Lorini smirked, as usual. My playing would be a disgrace. I'm too embarrassed to perform on such a special occasion, I tried to deflect the situation with modesty, but Lorini didn't stop. Oh, so you got such an expensive piano without being able to play? No wonder they call you a spendthrift. The rumors must be true. Her provocative words made even my eldest son say, hey. But Lorini wasn't one to stop with just that. Ethan looked at me, troubled. It can't be helped, today is special. I couldn't bear to see my son so distressed, so I walked towards the piano. Small footsteps followed, and my granddaughter, who loved the piano, clung to my side. She looked excited, her cheeks flushed with anticipation. I can't wait to see how she plays. I'm sure it'll be a cat -off mess at best, Lorini sneered. As I sat at the piano and opened the keyboard cover, the other daughters-in-law frowned at her attitude. 
Linu wasn't liked much, even among the daughters-in-law, because she often lorded her position as the eldest son's wife over them. She always took advantage of her position as the eldest son's wife to debase the other daughters-in-law around, so it was no surprise. The keys felt cold and familiar under my fingers. The piano was always kept in tune, ready to play. After flexing my wrist a bit, I let my fingers run across the keys. I started playing Chopin No. 4 in F minor, Op. 52. It is a difficult piece, with a gentle beginning followed by a part that requires superb technique. Lorini recognized the piece immediately and froze, her face a picture of shock. Playing the piano again made all my worries fade away. I played one demanding piece after another that my husband loved, ending with a jazz arrangement of a favorite children's song. As soon as I finished, the family applauded wildly. My granddaughter hugged my knee, exclaiming, amazing, amazing. Lorini was the only one who looked displeased. I smiled at her. Mom, you really were a pianist. I thought dad was joking. Even my eldest son seemed excited. I had kept my past as a pianist a secret from my sons, especially Ethan. After graduating from a music school in Vienna and starting my career as a pianist, I met my husband and had Ethan. Faced with a choice between piano and my family, I chose my husband and son. My husband and I kept the truth hidden to ensure Ethan never felt burdened by it. When I declared I would never play again, my husband bought this piano for me, asking only that I play for him. I later found out that my MIL had also helped buy the piano. She told me that she and my husband had worked together to find and purchase this piano for me, in exchange for taking away my dream. This piano was a symbol of my bond with my husband and my mother-in-law's love. I would never give it to someone who valued it only for its monetary worth. You know, I've never heard Lorini play. Mom, could you ask her to play a piece? Ethan asked me. Really, Lorini, didn't you graduate from an elite music school? I've never heard you play either. I was surprised, their house didn't even have a piano. It seemed odd. Lorini, could you play something? I'd love to hear it. I stood up to give her the piano bench, but she didn't move. The chair she had tried to claim so boldly before now seemed to terrify her, and she backed away, her face having turned completely pale. I'm not feeling well today, she tried to excuse herself. Are you unwell? You are eating and drinking just fine. Is there another reason you can't play? I pressed her, suspecting the worst. Lorini mumbled some excuses. Don't tell me you lied about graduating from that elite music school too, she flinched at my words. What, is that true? Did you lie about everything? I couldn't help but raise my voice. Lorini's face turned pale, and she looked like she might faint. Did you lie about your music school too? Ethan asked, shocked. Lorini fell silent. At that moment, our youngest grandchild tottered over and pulled a flyer from Lorini's back pocket. The child handed it to me, saying, here you go. In their small way, it might have been an attempt to defuse the tense situation. I smiled and took it, thanking the child. Then I gasped. It was a flyer for a company that buys used pianos at high prices. A price was written on it in pen, likely from a phone call. Lorini, you are planning to sell my piano. I had reached my limit. I yelled at Lorini and handed the flyer to the relatives. Everyone peered at it, then looked at Lorini in astonishment. Unable to bear the scrutiny, she ran out of the house. The one I felt most sorry for was Ethan. His wife had been proven a liar. I couldn't find words for him. Afterward, Ethan divorced Lorini. He reached his limit with her constant lies. She had a spending problem and had secretly accumulated a large debt. She planned to sell my piano to pay it off. When Ethan found out, he immediately filed for divorce. 
Lorini, having built her marriage on lies, lost her job and moved back in with her parents. I heard debt collectors frequently visit her parents' house. After all this, I decided to open a small piano school. A few neighborhood kids attend. The piano seems happy to be played by the children. My granddaughter also started taking lessons. My second son's wife was so moved by my performance that she decided to have her daughter learn to play the piano. I help with the lesson fees. The house, once quiet, is now filled with the sound of children, making it lively. I believe my husband would be pleased. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.